Okay, take number 700. Hi, Rifka. How are you? Good. I'm eating cherries. Those cherries look amazing. It's going to be better. Cherries are good. Is that your favorite fruit? Um, I, t- I tend to ask that question a lot. Like, what is your favorite? I would say good strawberries are my favorite. Yeah. Do you like dipping in chocolate? Sure. <laughs> it's not like on the regular basis that I'm going to like melt chocolate, you know? Yeah. So it's I just. pretty easy to, though. Yeah. Melt I don't chocolate. Know. No. Just I just have a cup have of hot plain water. strawberries. Yeah. I love strawberries, too. What's ask your favorite me? fruit? I was literally going to ask you to ask me what my favorite fruit is. What's your favorite fruit? Thank you. Um, Probably strawberries. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and like good watermelon. A good piece of watermelon is... is you will, literally will, just will, copied will, me now. Will do you justice. <laughs> yeah, I want to make you happy. No, um, not watermelon. Like, there are so many like interesting fruits. I love eating like all the fruit, the Shahiyanu fruits on like Rosh Hashanah. Really? Yeah, it's so much fun. I hate like trying new things, new fruits that like yeah. I don't know what it's. You're such a like. six. Yeah, you hate new stuff. You hate adventure, fun. I love adventure, having a good time. You hate it, right? No, I'm just a miserable person. You're just miserable on the inside. I want to be in bed all day, doing nothing. Kind of like that's where I'm at in my life too. Like really, I mean, all I kind of want to do is just be so in bed. It's not too. <laughs> yeah, I, it's yeah, but really, yeah, I don't think so. I think you're saying that because you have so much work going on, but if you didn't, you would want to. Oh, for sure. You would like be like. Good. Thank you for thing. psychoanalyzing me like that. That, that. that was deep. You're welcome. Yeah. I'd rather have a, fleet, a, a plate. I studied twofold. psychology. You did study psychology. It's a fun <laughs> it sounds, little blip in your life. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds so professional when I say it, but like it literally was not. Um, should Wait, I say we, what happened to me on the train? Because <laughs> I actually really like that story. Yeah. Yeah. I was on the train. She's laughing because she told me the story already, but I'm, I love hearing things more than once. Yeah, so I was on the train. I this prefer it around like five times, actually. It's five times? My number. Yeah, it's okay, perfect. Number. Okay. I'll call you tonight and tell you the story again. Okay, thank you. And then just an- another three times after that. Right. Yeah. No. Two, two oh, times. Three times. Three yeah. times. Yeah. And don't make two me math. Two times after Do that. not two make me math. It doesn't that. matter. Just I call me more. Whatever. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just love me. Just love me. Um, what's the story? Oh, I was on the train and this family came on and they were like, the mom was like deep in her crossword puzzle and she, they, they were like saying like, oh, we have to get up at this stop. So I was like listening like a nosy, nosy girl. And <laughs> I, they were getting, we were getting closer to the train to the stop. And I was like really having a dilemma of like, should I tell them that this is their stop or should I just keep to myself? Cause that's really weird to like know which stop they're getting off. Thankfully, when we got to the stop, they got off, but it was just, it was a, it was really an internal dilemma. Like it it stood out to me. I was like, wow, like I think I would have told them in the end, like if they really weren't getting off, but I was like really panicking for like a good two minutes. Like, what should I tell them? That's my story. Love it. Better. I wish I I told you the first time. (laughs) (laughs) Better the second time. It's more concise. You're such a good person. Yeah, I know. Telling people their stops. It's really my. Listening uh, into their conversations. Yeah. That was any, a job. Any you story, kill it. Any funny story that happened to you today? Uh, not today, this week. Um, no, but I am sick. Right. <laughs> <laughs> How does it feel? <laughs> it feels kind of shitty. I, yeah. I don't like I like being sick, but I also don't like it. Creative. <laughs> Anyways, okay. What's um, so funny? Yeah, I, I mean, know, I think it's re- it's really late at night. It really is. We really decided to do this podcast it's too late, probably. Yeah, we did. This is a little too late. We just all, we're just so busy, like honestly, with life. We no. Did you see my armpit sweat? Is that what you're saying? Um, Self conscious no. about it. I've always <laughs> wanted to kind of like grow out my armpit here. <laughs> Why? I don't know because I think it's a cool look. <laughs> That's disgusting. <laughs> I don't know how someone could think that's a cool look, but <laughs> look, I mean, but it's also really not applicable to my life. Like with the the shirts I wear, and also I have laser, <laughs> so right. it's like really not like you want to like show like walk out with like hair. Yeah, outfits. like be like a feminist, you know. I mean, not I'll, really. I will never understand that, but yeah, not not really, not really, okay. not really. Yeah, I do, but I do respect it. I respect it. Well, speaking of, because I like that women are like taking <laughs> nice, nice, <laughs> take their body hair back, you know. I mean, listen. I feel like I'm doing every, a service. Everyone do whatever they want. Live and let live. Hell yeah. But I just don't think you're going to get... 
you'll get you'll get a certain type of man if you're gonna have your hair out that's that's all i'll say at the end of the day women want men to be fit and be stronger and men want certain things from women that makes them attracted to them and it's okay like it's not i this is my opinion but I don't think it's sexist to want a girl to be like shaved or like with no hair on her le- like or you're just more attracted to that. It's just it's the, it's the human nature of and and everyone has their different preferences and quirks and whatever like differences that they want. So like that obviously changes and if a man loves that you have hairy armpits then perfect do your thing. But I, I just don't see why it has anything to do with like a feminist movement. That's all. Right. Yeah. We want to go into our topic? Sure. Um, I guess speaking of feminists, we'll talk about the whole Jonah Hill thing. A lot of people thought that it was sexist, <laughs> misogynist. Like, um, Well, what is the whole Jonah thing? A whole Jonah Hill thing? Rivka? Right, right. I should explain it. Basically, yeah. um, his girlfriend, who he broke up with a year ago, now he has a baby with a new person. Um, she basically recently released texts that he sent her about certain things that he wants her to change basically her not to like surf with boys her not to post her pictures of herself and like bikinis um her to stop hanging out with her friends who he says are toxic and if you can't do that then i'm like leaving the relationship and she basically framed it as like emotionally abusive he's narcissistic misogynist all these things um and there i think people are very split on it I mean, Kai are very split on it. Um, so yeah, you can share your perspective. Yeah, I think the requests he was making of her were were uh, reflective of a deep um, self consciousness on Jonah Hill's behalf, um, and not trust trusting his partner. And they weren't um, what I would say like healthy, normal request for somebody to make in a relationship um you know asking her to take down certain pictures of herself and her bathing suit on instagram or um or asking her not to talk to her male colleagues at work at her surfing at her surfing job not to surf with certain men these type of things where it was like i think a little like beyond controlling and not not reflective i guess of a healthy communicative relationship Oh God! Was it? <laughs> Bless you. Sorry, I'm sick. Yeah, we we heard <laughs> that part. That? <laughs> you mentioned that. Um, and in any case, it 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 yeah, it really struck me as as pretty concerning that he just like was like, yeah, if you don't do these things, then um, I'll leave you. And um, I didn't I didn't like it. I didn't like it at all. How do you think someone should like approach like saying what? what their non-negotiables are in a relationship um i think they first of all should be up front with it as much as they can at the time at the time of like i guess getting together and seeing if this is going to be a plausible relationship but i think it's important to self-reflect on what you expect and what you want because there are certain things that are are absolutely uh what's the word I guess normal or like are would make sense in a relationship like if you're going to ask your partner not to cheat on you that's like a healthy boundary I would say that both part- parties would benefit from and could come to terms on agreeing with um but if you like to me it gets really into dicey territory when you're asking your partner to do certain things uh, uh, to do certain things that have to do with how they express themselves or how they even dress or how that they, they, they behave um, and then hovering your relationship over as a threat of of leaving if they don't do it. Well, would it have been better? <coughs> it's just me thinking because like a lot of times you meet somebody and especially in like the secular world now, it's hookup culture in the beginning and then you're it's very casual until you make it official girlfriend and boyfriend, you know? So you're not, they're not necessarily figuring every single thing out about the person. Um, would it be better to just break up with someone saying like this is not for me versus telling them the things that exactly what you would need them to change in order for you to be with them like is that a better option to just like leave to just break up with them um 
I don't know. It could be that's better. And honestly, some, like yeah. I'm thinking. I think you need to communicate. But, but that's the, communication comes from two self-aware and healthy individuals working together in a relationship to try to ascertain a healthier level of healthy relationship. Jonah, I don't think was at that level at all. He was demanding. He was making demands from her. And if she didn't, if she didn't do those demands, he was going to leave. But that's, that's not communication. That's not setting boundaries. That's everyone's like, no, no, I'm not saying what he's saying is right because it seems crazy. But like, that's, ev- that's what we all do when we have non-negotiables, right? Like personally for me, I'm not going to, I'm not going to date somebody who's not religious that's my non-negotiable. If I dated somebody and then I found out that they were not religious, I would say, you need to become religious or I'm leaving you, right? Is that a emotional abuse? Is that like <coughs> controlling somebody's behavior? You know what I'm saying? No, I don't think it's the same thing at all, really. I mean, th- I also think these things are like a, a religious lifestyle is a value-driven um need and it's not a demand it's 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 not really demand but uh, but at the same asking them to change their way of life yeah but you're not demanding it i'm saying you have to do this or i'm leaving you yeah i mean also i mean he didn't say you attacked but like that's i I just yeah i wouldn't say i want to say something like that like that's yeah i think a little i don't think anyone like that's narcissistic yeah i do think also we're seeing like one-sided of the conversation it's possible that it's possible that it's the conversation started in a different way where she's like, I need you to do this and this. And he's like, well, I need you to do this and this or I'm leaving you. Like, I feel like also seeing one side of the conversation makes it a little bit interesting. That's just like another perspective. But I don't know. I just think at the end of the day, like to claim that, you know, he's a narcissist or like he's emotionally abusing you. Like, I don't obviously I'm not a doctor in any way. So like, I don't know what like maybe if a doctor would say like this is emotional abuse then okay but it just it doesn't seem like because he's he's just saying what he needs in a relationship and he's gonna go find someone else who can give him that and clearly he did because now he has a baby with somebody i mean you, sure. but you could also look at you could look at that example and you could also fit such a broad spectrum of actually abusive relationship under that domain of he's just saying what he needs or he's just making demands for what he needs but the content of someone's character will show in the kind of demands that they have. Plus the fact that we're talking about demands as if your relationship, as if your partner, you can make demands of your partner. Of that's course you ridiculous. can make demands of your partner. That's ridiculous to me. No, that's controlling. That's narcissism. That's, that's narcissism. That's abusive. You don't make demands from somebody. You're in a relationship together. You're finding boundaries that both work for you if there's a prop let's say if you're more sensitive to you know like this is this is how i would have hoped jonah hill would have approached something like this if he was of course like a self-aware individual hey i am a loser in a way i no, I mean, he wouldn't say that but i'm saying i am insecure i'm insecure I, I i don't i feel like i've got i got you and i don't know why you're with me and I fear every day that you're going to leave me. You know, this is probably what's undergirding a lot of why he made those demands. Say, um, wh- I, this this is really bothering me. And therefore, I feel like I have to tell you not to put these pictures up. Or I have to tell you not to talk to guys you're surfing with in your in your um, surfing company. Because I just feel like one day you're going to realize I'm what you're with a loser and just leave me. That obviously in 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 a in a like in a w- for him to say that in a way obviously that is true and it's not like obviously as harsh as i'm saying it is what needed to happen as opposed to him just making those demands but he clearly didn't want to take the next step with her he clearly wanted to leave her so i'm saying i don't think he was like willing to to work on it together with her which probably yeah that's good. what i'm saying he really thing. wasn't he was a narcissist about it and he was he couldn't care less about her and about being in this relationship. You just wanted to control. I don't know. I think it's a very complicated issue. I I don't you know, I, and just, then if he, I just think like I'm just putting myself in the perspective of it. If I was in a relationship with someone and they're like, you have to do this, this, and that, or like 
or like these are my non-negotiables obviously if they said it like that that would already be one red flag but like if they're just like these are my non-negotiables and i didn't feel like i can meet those non-negotiables i say okay so then we can't be together um or if i could meet those non-negotiables and i feel like i feel the same way then perfect let's let's work on that together you know what i'm saying like that's where i see it and when you say make demands of course that's maybe that wording is it doesn't sit right with you but like at the end of the day you are going to make demands from your partner you're going to say you're going to treat me like this you're going to treat me like that if you don't treat me with respect in certain ways then i'm not going to be with you that's an underlying <coughs> that's an underlying <coughs> agreement in a relationship but there are demands in a relationship from both parties and he just felt like he had to voice that and i mean i'm not like I think it's ridiculous because he got into her. He became, he was with her bef- when he, he knew that she was like a surfing instructor and mm-hmm. she's probably posting these things on Instagram before she knew him. So like he knew what he's getting himself into. But like once you realize that those things you can't deal with, then you voice it and you leave. Like I just don't, I'm, I'm struggling to see the like emotional abuse. Like I think he's a loser and like she should, she shouldn't, she shouldn't want to be with him. Like mm-hmm. go find someone better. But like, why is it, abuse and like such such a crazy deal like as if she's like a victim of something no you you're in a relationship with somebody like who who's not good enough for you who can, who's not secure enough to like see you out there doing these things being with men all the time or like doesn't like your friends so that's not someone you want to be in a relationship with so you move on to somebody else you know yeah i definitely see the emotional abuse in it and i definitely see the manipulation and the narcissism um, I think the demands he was making from her, the fact that he was making demands, I don't, I don't, I don't think that word belongs in a relationship in a way, um, unless you're dealing with somebody who has promised you that they will show up for you, and 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 they've 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 lost their they've lost their like status in the relationship. Maybe they cheated, and you decide they're going to stay with them, and you make demands of, okay, this is what you better do in order for me to like yeah. st- still stick with you. In that case, I feel like demand so works. So we have no idea But what demands the never really like. works in general, I think, in a relationship. And then second of all, I think the kind of things that he was asking from her were controlling, not normal, and the things that she, were doing, she was doing were very benign. They included posting pictures of her actual surfing job on her Instagram. She was wearing a bikini, um, you know, speaking with male colleagues which is like you, you, we're like in a we live in a society with like gen like genders like that's gonna happen the, these are not these are not requests I that you can make speaking. basically I think more there was more than that but like um it's, it just it to me it's like this is like what domestic abusive like husbands do to their wives they control their behavior they say you can't talk to this person you can't do this you can't wear this you can't do this and it's like that's not you that's not you like keep it in your circles man yeah i don't know i guess i guess this is just we just disagree on this yeah i don't know it's the same if you can call it i very highly respect like when people respect people's individuality um yeah i think that's at the base of it so people say but you're gonna have to compromise in a relationship right and there's gonna be things that you have to <coughs> agree to give up for the other person that yeah like lose yourself to, a little bit you know not i mean i don't know if lose yourself but like you're gonna have to compromise give up certain things that you hold on to that like is harming the relationship like forget about what jonah hill said in general doing these things like you're gonna have to compromise or something so i feel like people are like forgetting because of the actual demands that he makes it's like becoming like this sexist thing because we live in a society where it's so normal to like post your bikini pictures and like you know be with men all the time and it's like this is just the norm and it's okay but like in general t- telling your partner what you need from them that's that's what a relationship is giving your partner what they need so i'm just I don't know. I think it becomes abuse when it's like, when it's like real manipulation or the person's like scared. Um, they don't have any individuality within themselves. They can't like leave the relationship because they are financially unstable or like stuff like that. Like that's where it becomes abuse. But like, he's saying this, this, and that, or I'm going to leave. I don't 
don't see I didn't get that. Could you try again? Shut up. <laughs> supposed to be a part of the conversation, Siri. Anyways, that's the... Um, that. Is there anything else you wanted to say about that? I want to see, like, what's the definition of domestic abuse? Um, no. I, I don't really have much else to say. Huh. <sighs> It is. It is sad. It is. It's always a sad thing when when a celebrity, I guess, maybe you admired or liked, ends up ends up n- not being someone you could admire and like very much after again. <laughs> but that is the nature of all of this. Can't really put anything on on people. It's just people mm-hmm. do bad stuff. You think he's a bad person? I don't know. I don't know if he. I don't know if you could make that. If I can make that judgment call, you know, I don't think this is a very. You don't, do good you think thing. that there's maybe more this to I the think story? Is bad. More to the story that we don't know from like their relationship. Yeah, I mean, there's obviously more that we don't know. You know, I don't know what kind of lover Jonah is. <laughs> <laughs> so it says emotional abuse includes non-physical behaviors that are meant to control, isolate, or frighten you. This may pre- may represent present in romantic relationship as threats insults constant monitoring excessive jealousy manipulation humiliation intimidation dismissive dismissiveness among others so i guess we can say that this is threat of like leaving her but i just <laughs> it's control i just don't understand like how, what's the difference between this and someone else saying like this is the reason why i'm leaving you because i don't you can't fulfill these needs is that control is that threatening somebody sometimes you just need to leave a relationship if it's not for you you can leave. You can leave, but you That's what he did. I think she ended up leaving him, no? No, we said or I'm going to leave. I don't know. She probably said I'm not doing that for you, right. so he left. Right. Yeah, the demands I think he was making were I think were controlling and and abusive. Yeah, in any case, would you date um, Jonah Hill? No. I would not. Just cuz like there's like nothing like <laughs> not Appealing. Jewish, not so I like hear Jewish. Thing. Oh, he is Jewish? Mm-hmm. Not religious. <laughs> oh, God. Demand. I would never date a celebrity, I don't think, of that caliber. I think it's too... It's too, it's too risky? Too, like, too much mess. Like, they probably have so many issues, you know? Um, I don't know. Would you date yeah, a celebrity? Issues. Um, yeah, I, I mean, yeah, I guess. if the, it, I guess it depends on the celebrity. <laughs> I'm saying, like... Like, wh- like the, I don't think the... I would discount it just because okay. there's... <laughs> Like I probably actually would be like, More you want to date it. me, your celebrity, right? Yeah, I actually had a conversation about like meeting your your celebrities or meeting your heroes. Like, um, would you want to? But who is my hero? I don't know if I have like a hero that's like a celebrity. You know what I'm saying? Um, but no, it's probably better not to. Right? Probably it's for is. sure better not to. There. Honestly, though, not not necessarily. A lot of the people that I feel like I admire in like the film TV space are <laughs> they, like they have a good rap. Greta Gerwig, Sofia Coppola, Michael Cera. Sofia, oh, you know the whole drama that's happening between Sofia. Is it Sofia Coppola? Coppola. Is that someone different from Sofia Coppola? <laughs> Coppo? Coppo. Coppo? Yeah. Uh, who's Sofia Coppola? <laughs> <Wait. laughs> Sofia Coppola, Co- Sofia Coppola. Maybe it's the same person, but I. That try. sounds very much like you're just reading the Sophia last name wrong. Michael Sarah, Michael Sarah. Coppola, like C U L P O. Oh, Colpo. No. Oh, okay, fine. Who's Colpo? Who's uh, Sofia Coppola? She's. I don't even know what she does, but like they have a. Why do you know all of these things? Because I listen to so many pop culture podcasts. She's Olivia Culpo's sister, and Olivia Culpo was like, oh, America, maybe? we know Olivia Culpo. Who is she? I don't know. Oh. <laughs> I was going to ask you. <laughs> I think she was like Miss America or something. And no. now they have like a reality show with them, like their sister or something. <laughs> Whatever. But there's Keeping just with the a drama. Like, you know Alex Earl? You should have. Wait, you don't know Alex Earl? You don't know Alex Earl? Alex Earl? Yeah. No. She's like huge on TikTok. Who is that? Whatever. She's like really one of the most famous people on um, social media now. And she gets like invited everywhere. Like, did you see <laughs> throwing up more names at you? Did you see Mike Rubin had like a party, a white party? A white party? 
Mike, the white people Mike party? Cuban? Mark Cuban? <laughs> Mark Cuban. No, no, no. no the guy no. who writes those books. No, 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 no. no, no. <laughs> no. Like the, the, Mike Rubin. the financial books? Mike Rubin? Michael Rubin? Maybe you say it Michael more Rubin. times, it'll become... White party, whatever. Anyways, she gets invited everywhere, this Alex Earl. And it's a girl? Yes. Okay. So she started dating Olive Sophia Culpo's boyfriend and is like posting everything about it. And but like he, when they broke up, it was like a messy breakup. Yeah. Like it was not Sophia Culpo and the boyfriend. Yes. He's okay. like a baseball player or something. Oh, um, never date baseball players. Never. They'll break your heart. They will abuse you. <laughs> totally. Because they'll tell you what they need from the relationship. No, like they actually physically abuse you or something. Oh, oh. yeah. Okay. Yeah. What, what do you What do you mean? Why are you saying this? Yeah, as if it's like a real oh, it's thing? like a real thing. What like do you mean? a lot of like sports people end up doing that to their wives. Really? I mean, I know that like obviously athletes are not the best. They don't have the best track record at like being loyal in a relationship. Yeah, that's for sure. But um, by the way, I do have to say that I do think cheating is probably more emotionally abusive than what Jonah Hill is doing. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> unless he cheated, I don't know. But not maybe emotionally abusive is the wrong word, but like emotionally distressful. Distressing. Is that a word? Distressing. Di- di- distressing. Yeah. Distressing. Um whatever. They just had a messy breakup and then like Alex Earl's like posting with this new this guy and like she's flaunting it all over social media. So it's like a whole thing. But they don't know if like he cheated on on her with this girl or whatever anyways that's a drama it's really it's oh, really mindless God. yeah that is mindless that's good it's good, it's good drama good drama is mindless yeah and then <coughs> there's also the whole it's like we also don't have this in our community you know we kind of do but also it's just not as interesting or like at least i'm not interested there's no like social media personalities out there right who are, like dating this person i'm saying like this person like, yeah like dating yeah. and this and this and but i was gonna say about like jewish dating like with this whole jonah hill thing like i just feel like we have a good we have a good grasp on like figuring out your non-negotiables beforehand, like and like getting presented with people that kind of have that in a way. Obviously, you have to go through dating to understand what your non-negotiables are. Yeah, but like once you do, like you can filter that out with with the guys that even are presented to you. Right. Where in the secular world, it's very casual, and you're you know you're hooking up, and then you're getting to know the person, and then you're discovering do we even have the same values. Yeah, uh, you're first literally getting physically um, attached to this person because you're. I think a lot of a lot of people hold off on that though. There's like a large. I feel like there's a there's been a pushback against that the hookup culture actually, where a lot of women have been reclaiming the idea of what it actually means to be, um, not the chill girl, like actually being in a in a in a relationship and maybe I don't know. That's not from not what from I see what. Not from what I see or hear about, but it could be. I don't know. Um, yeah, I mean, I, but I've regardless, seen it like you know, you figure out your values, and then like, and then you get to know somebody, and you f- see if they fit within your values, and then you values figure values. out your values, <laughs> and then you Oops. do like you know the the physical touch and all that. So, um, <laughs> I just think it's different. Then you do the touch. Then you do the touching. <laughs> And the other thing that's happening these days is that Miranda Sings has this whole um, allegations against her. Apparently, she's like sent like pictures of her with her in lingerie to this like young kid. And like then she made an apology video and she's just like she's like singing like her apology video with yeah, a new <laughs> Like it's just so crazy. Did you yeah. grow up with like Miranda Sings? Did you like her? I didn't really watch her like at all. Yeah, me neither. I always like. All I remember is her having like crazy lipstick on. Yeah. She kind of reminded me of someone in our grade. I could tell you after who. Oh my God. Yeah. I I think she was just iconic for that, for that like that voice that she makes and that yeah. lipstick thing. Yeah. yeah. So interesting. Um and she just it's just crazy because like these people seem like so innocent to like like wow, she seems whacked. She seems <laughs> there's some, she, she, you said she seems whacked. She seems like there's something wrong with her, like oh. for real. <laughs> like she brings people on stage to like and then they touch her he's like young so boys weird yeah what is that wait that's so weird that's it's just, also weird that she's like doing it in public like she's not like hiding. i'm just like i don't understand it's like 
she's isn't she like a youtuber like a family friendly youtuber i think she has like a husband no yeah but i'm saying why does she have shows where she's like doing oh, people like go on tour no i know but i'm saying going on tour and like doing that kind of thing on your <laughs> no i don't know i'm, I don't I'm saying that i don't understand no i neither. don't understand like i don't think i don't the threads they don't thread into something that i'm threading the threads are not threading. the threads they're not threading each other yeah i don't i have no idea this also came out of nowhere like i the, <laughs> the way i haven't thought about miranda sings in like yeah 12 years oh my god like, how did you just come out of nowhere no and like who sings their apology video that that, that that reflectively that she was probably like that was probably a bad idea she, you think so i don't think so she's probably like really proud she's of probably it. like killed it yeah probably like dang people probably really feel apologized for through this video am i gonna lie like there's this ginormous bag of carrots <laughs> sitting on this like Where? in your house right over there it's cost oh you can't see it's huge that's costco everything do you think you'd bulk. be sick if you ate that many carrots like yeah, if i had probably. the whole bag oh God, funny story when i was a kid i went to the nutritionist because i was overweight overweight <laughs> i don't know why it's saying that overweight white <laughs> you know white <laughs> what i was over white <laughs> anyway she was just ta- she was like what do you what do you eat today whatever i told her everything that i ate that day the hell and then <laughs> i mean that's what nutritionists do true right? like, to, yeah <laughs> so then she was like she's you like, okay to- you have to eat like this many vegetables this many whatever whatever so I got home and then we had a huge thing of baby carrots, probably that big. I was just remember lying down on the couch, munching on these carrots, like a full bowl of like baby you had carrots. to eat these baby yeah, carrots. Yeah, I was already dying. It was disgusting. And um, I remember the next time I went to her, like I maybe lost a little bit of weight. She's like, "Oh my god, what did you do? You lost so much weight." I'm like, "Shut up! Like, you are so annoying." Oof. Yeah. So Ooh. I never went to nutritionist again. Like she actually scarred me. I'm sorry. That sucks. Once I have a bad experience with something, I'm not going back. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not mm-hmm. happening. I get you. Yeah, that's pretty normal. But, like, also, uh, the fact that she was like, oh, my, oh, yeah, girl, I a- did yeah. not know you could do it. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, <give me> your <laughs> trick. <laughs> you, like, just sit and be miserable and eat carrots all day yeah, on my like, couch. I carrots. I ate How 100 carrots you? a day. Maybe 12 or something. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you poor thing. That's when we I became friends. <laughs> yeah, totally. 12 years old. <laughs> Was it? No. Eighth grade. 14. 13. 14. 14 what was your first baby. impression of me? Ooh, I don't remember. Come on. I, I don't remember. Okay, I'm sure. Quirky. I'm sure. You thought I was quirky? Yeah. The heck? You thought I was quirky? The word quirky thing. came into your head when you thought you saw like me? When I'm thinking of my first impression of you. I'm thinking like, yeah, I probably thought I think you were quirky. Oh, my God. That's really interesting to me. Yeah, that's really interesting. And me. also, like, I, I couldn't, I couldn't pinpoint you. I think, like, I, it was hard for me to pinpoint you. You couldn't figure me out. I couldn't figure you out. You're just so mysterious. I was just like a creative. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> just a creative, creative. I love that. Would you ever have thought, like, when we're in eighth grade, that, that you'd we be would like, be best friends? No, that's not what I mean, <laughs> that. But no, that, that you'd we be, would like, be the two of the rest of our life. <laughs> <laughs> that we'd be depressed. <laughs> that you'd be writing right now. Oh, did you always love no. writing? I always loved writing. Like even like in writing. eighth grade. Yeah, that's crazy to me. The other day, I was doing like spring cleaning of my closet, and yeah. I stumbled upon like old things that I've written. I don't think it was as far back as eighth grade, <laughs> but I was writing for as long as I can remember, and like impressive too like most of the time when you look back you're like wow yeah, you're i cringe this is crazy i yeah. was like wow no this is this is good this is good stuff which i like you I just like- wrote for yourself yeah i hate writing like i cannot stand it i'm not good at it it's just a torture for me but it's awesome when people could i remember there's so many people in high school who would write poems yeah like, wow, that cannot there's be some me. really talented right i remember <laughs> you know there's one girl in our grade shauna she's a very talented Bloom? writer too drizzen Oh, I don't know if she's dressing anymore, but oh yeah, yeah, yeah. She's very talented. Wrote some amazing poems. Um, yeah, no, I, I, I don't think I would think that. But I always did have like a feeling that I needed to do something that probably that you wasn't. Like. Conv- yeah, that probably. Then you're gonna like just follow the path of like everyone. Yeah, not because I didn't. Not because because I just didn't think it was like right for me. You know. Yeah. Yeah, but 
I don't remember my first impression of you. I just remember like being friends with you. That's it. I, I don't remember how sorry. I just remember like we were just. I don't even there. know. How, yeah, like there. I was just there. Honestly, like, you were just. You guys there. had your group of friends, and I was just there. Like you literally, literally were really just random. there. <laughs> like you started hanging out with you guys, and like you guys accepted me, which was really nice. <laughs> And I just allowed you to be a part of the group. <laughs> and I was just there, but like there was one time where there was somebody they were planning a birthday party. I think it was your birthday party. Really? They were planning in the park. I think that might have but we planned they them all in the park. They blind <laughs> that's true. <laughs> <laughs> they always have a live an idea. Let's do a press park. Oh, oh my God. that's so original. So original. Um they Remember blindfolded. We were like you. a limo for some months. Yeah, that was like tenth grade. <laughs> that was Goldie's. God, we went all out. But this was in eighth grade. I just joined your group of friends. So like I was nervous, you know, like I was <laughs> you had to I felt be like on your place. best behavior. <laughs> Literally, like, am I getting accepted in here or not? And they blindfolded you and everything. And I was supposed to meet them at a certain time. I think I came like five minutes late. Oh. They push it left without me. Like, <laughs> not a cure in the world. They didn't come back What is me. it about, like, your younger me? self that is absolutely, like, ruthless, like, <laughs> yeah, like Nazi really level? Really like, really you know really what I mean? Like, like oh, she's not here on time. We're going to leave her in the freaking dark. Like, we're no, going to leave I think you guys, like, completely forgot about me. Like, I was irrelevant. <laughs> <laughs> it's like oh, I'm right. i totally forgot I'm you right. were a ghost but i think you guys realized after and then like i remember the next day i remember that day like crying my eyes out uh i think it was more the embarrassment of like telling my mom and my siblings that like they left without me <laughs> like my mom was probably so happy that i just had like friends <laughs> i was like finally she's not a psycho crazy kid <laughs> yeah. like i thought she was and then like i literally you guys left without me it was a trauma i'm I think, so you know, sorry no it's okay i'm over it i worked out i worked it out you worked it out. You are the person you are because but of yeah, it. yeah, we rented a limo one year. Birthdays are like such a stress. Like, why do we have they to? They really don't have to be. Like, at least in, in, in this point of no, time. at this point, like, you just go out to eat and no, in move this, on with your day. In the, can you let me? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm letting you. What do you mean? I've been letting you this entire time. This, this barely, Yeah, no. Like, barely, birthdays, barely, barely. Birthdays. Oh, yeah. You no, know, I'm letting you speak. Okay. This. I just don't understand. Oh. Okay, yeah, for real. This what? Nice, nice. Yeah, funny. I don't want to like get to your head though, because then you're gonna be like, I'm a comedian. And no, you're gonna I literally go to stand up. A funny joke. Go, oh. We were in the elevator. <laughs> Dude, we were not in the everybody is suited for stand up, Rifka. No, I actually really want to go to stand up. I. Why do you think I'm telling you this right now? You don't think I'm funny? I think you're hilarious. And so, if you do stand up, then I would totally like. I wouldn't let you come like in the beginning. What? I'd be way That's too embarrassed. Messed up. <laughs>